Congratulations, you have graduated from painting things, and now we are turning our attention to painting people, specifically painting portraits. First and foremost, we want to review the proportions of the face. If you don't remember this from Art 1 or you didn't take Art 1 with me, um, this is a great time to review, and you must, must, must have these proportions memorized. If you don't have these memorized, you're doing yourself a disservice because knowing these gives you a solid foundation for whatever portrait you're going to paint. Everyone's face is a little bit different, but they will generally follow all of these guidelines. The first thing is that the eyes are located halfway down the face. The nose is located halfway between the eyes and chin. The mouth is a third of the way down. The chin is two thirds of the way down from the nose to the chin. There are five eyes across the width of the face. There is one eye width in between both eyes. The nose is one eye width. In other words, the width of the space between the eyes. And the mouth, the width of the mouth is approximately from pupil to pupil if you're in a neutral position. And the ears go from the bottom of the nose all the way to the brow bone or to the top of the eyes. So let's go over the difference between drawing versus painting. And we've already been covering this in your first still life painting, where we've been breaking down the form into values. And those value shapes can also be known as planes. So we're going to be drawing using what's called planar analysis. So where we take a form and we break it up into different planes, otherwise known as different values. And then once we have this structure, we can go back in and smooth it out while maintaining all the different distinct areas. The way you want to think about it is that each stroke of paint corresponds to a different plane on the, plane on the form. Now, everyone always says that drawing portraits are really difficult, and they really are. And that's because the face has so many different planes. When we were working with a sphere, maybe there's four to six planes, but on a face, there's tons and tons of planes. And all of those planes will be unique to the person that you are painting or drawing. So we're gonna dive in to learn a little bit more about the facial structure before you actually go into painting someone. Your first exercise is that you're going to paint one of these model heads, one of these planar model heads, using a monochromatic color palette. A monochromatic color palette is one color, plus white, and plus black. Here's an example of what your painting might look like. I didn't finish it just because this is a sample, but you would finish your entire head. I also wanted to show you how you're going to organize your palette. I, I have used blue here, but you can use whatever color you want. You'll have white, your color, and black. Notice that I'm aligning them on the side of my palette. We want to keep things organized as much as possible. Then you're going to go ahead and mix your distinct six values, so lightest to darkest, so they're available to you and there's rhyme and reason to why they're placed that way on the palette. Be sure to mix your values first before you start painting. You are going to approach this portrait in the same way that you approached your object painting. You're going to make a little inky mixture with usually your midtone, uh, and you're going to draw using your brush. Once again, I want you to use your brush so that it helps you slow down. The key here is to really look for shapes. Don't think about drawing a head and eyes and nose and mouth. Even though that is what you're drawing, the more you think about the features, the more it might mess you up. Another tip I would say is take one of your pictures and turn it upside down. I love painting portraits upside down. And I'd recommend that if you find yourself having trouble with the proportions, flip your picture upside down and flip your canvas upside down and paint it upside down. We're really striving for accuracy here. So if you find that something is looking off or your man isn't looking very human, stop and fix it. It is never ever too late to fix your portrait. And specifically with portraits, if one little thing is wrong, it will look like someone else. 
So portraits are definitely less forgiving than objects.